Imagine being able to place your 2D artwork onto 3D objects directly within Adobe Illustrator, creating beautiful images of your product packaging design. I'm Rick Barrett, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to design it with Cineware for Illustrator. Cineware for Illustrator is a free plugin from the same folks that make Cinema 4D, one of the top 3D modeling, animation, and rendering software packages. And you can get the plugin by simply going to 3D4AI.com. Just fill out a form, download the plugin, and install it. And then within Adobe Illustrator, you'll now have a 3D workspace. And this workspace contains all of the key tools that you'll need to work with 3D directly in Adobe Illustrator. The first thing that you'll need is some 3D objects. And you can get C4D files from the internet or from colleagues and place them directly into Adobe Illustrator simply by choosing File Place. Choose the C4D file, hit Place, and you can place that file anywhere within your Illustrator file. You can also access a large library of templates that are already optimized for use with Cineware for Illustrator. And you'll find them by clicking on this button here, which opens the Turbo Squid and Maxon Cineware for Illustrator store. And here you'll find a number of free presets as well as some collections that are geared around common tasks for graphic designers, putting brand identity into technology, into food packaging, cosmetics packaging, and other types of product packaging. These are available in collections that you can buy or individually. And once you purchase those, you will get an Illustrator file that looks like this, that already has the 3D artwork placed within the file and also provides a template for you to add your own 2D artwork onto that 3D object. So let's take a look at exactly how you apply your 2D artwork onto a 3D object using Cineware. I have some artwork here that is already created, so I'm going to copy that and paste it into my template. Now this artwork is already the exact right size, but you're probably going to want to design or adapt your artwork within the template in order to make sure it's the proper fit. The template has already been set up with the correct sizing so that you can apply your artwork onto the object without distortion. If you're not working with a template, then you can still apply your artwork to the 3D object, but it might require a little bit more experimentation. When we select this placed C4D artwork file, over here in the scene structure window, we're going to get access to all of the objects that make up this 3D scene. So we have the sky here, we have a couple of effects layers, we'll cover those later. We have the most important thing which is the coffee and we can turn that off and on using the eyeball icon here. And we also have the mug itself. So if we click on the arrow next to the mug we can see the elements that make up this mug object. So we have a mug sub object, and then if we twirl that down, we'll see a mug outside area that's been defined to allow you to easily apply your label. Now to the right of each of these objects is a icon that represents the material applied to that object. And if we click on that, down here in this attributes window, you'll see all of the material attributes for this mug object. And that includes the color as well as the luminance, the transparency, the reflectiveness, and the bump. So we're interested now in adjusting the base color of this mug. We can simply click on the color chip here and choose maybe a nice cyan and hit OK. And you can see that that's applied immediately to our 3D object. Now in order to apply our artwork to the mug, we want to look again at this mug outside area. And again, we'll click on the chip in order to see the attributes for the mug label. What we want to do now is select the artwork and drag it over the texture slot here within the color attributes. Once that's lit up, we can release the mouse and our artwork will be rasterized and applied onto the mug. Now this is live. I can select the artwork and adjust it at any time and we'll see the results almost immediately. 
I can select individual fish here and move them. And again, you'll see the results almost immediately in the 3D view. And this is a 3D view. It's not locked to this viewpoint of the object. If we look in the upper left corner here, we have some saved viewpoints or cameras that we can choose from. Now these with the padlock next to them have been locked within the template, so you won't be able to move those cameras. But we also have a camera here that's unlocked. And we can move that camera freely using these move, dolly, and rotate buttons. So we can click and drag on this move icon here in order to move the camera or view in relation to the 3D object. We can also click on this rotate icon and drag in order to rotate the view around the object. And this rotation is going to depend on a little bit on which object is selected here in the scene structure panel. So if we want to make sure that we're rotating around the mug, we should select the mug object before we rotate. Now we can also click and drag on this icon here in order to dolly the camera in or out, move the camera closer or further away from the object. In order to reframe the object, we can simply click on this button here, or we can click on this button in order to frame the entire scene. That doesn't work so well in this case. We'll just go back and frame the selected geometry of the mug that's selected here in the scene structure panel. Finally, we can also click on this icon here in order to revert to the saved viewpoint that was saved with the template. Now, this is a real 3D camera, so we also have the ability to adjust the focal length of the camera itself. If you click on the camera icon here within the scene structure panel, you're going to see all of the cameras that are built into the scene. And the free move camera here is the one that we're currently looking through. So click to select that, and down in the Attributes Manager, you'll now have access to the position, rotation, and focal length, f-stop, and shutter speed of this camera. So if we want a flatter, less distorted perspective, we can simply increase the focal length to 200 millimeters. And we don't need to redraw anything. Because this is real 3D, the camera will just adjust. Up till now, we've been working exclusively in the draft mode, which is fast as we change the texture and the camera and looks pretty good, but it's only a preview of the full quality that we can get out of Cineware. In order to start to work with the lights and layer our 3D artwork over Illustrator artwork, we need to jump into low quality mode. So to do that, we'll go to this drop down here and change from draft into low quality. Now, in the low quality mode, it's going to take longer to update, but we're going to get a better view of the actual lighting environment of our object, as well as we'll be able to layer this artwork over Illustrator artwork. So here you can see in the low quality mode that we're now getting a reflection here in the floor of our coffee mug. And again, this will look better as we increase the render quality. But for right now, we just want to tweak the lighting and the look. And we can do that by switching into the lighting tab here of the scene structure panel. And here you can see that we have three different lights, a top light, a front light, and a backlight. And clicking on any of these lights will bring it up in the attribute manager and allow us to adjust the color, the intensity, and whether or not that light casts shadows. So we can click on this color chip here and add a little bit of warmth onto this light, for instance. And if we click OK, it'll take a second to update. And I've overdone it for the sake of visibility, but we'll see a much warmer light casting down from above on this coffee mug. Actually, that's not the kind of look that I was going for. So I'm going to switch it back into a full white light but it gives you an idea of what you can do here. Now, right now we're working in a reflective environment and that's an environment that was set up here within this template. You can see here the use reflective floor option. If we turn that use reflective floor option off, we're gonna take out the luminant box that this object is sitting in and we'll see the Illustrator artwork underneath. 
Now, in order for this to work, you do need to make sure that you have set the transparency mode to alpha so that we knock out the 3D art background. And you also do need to be in at least low quality mode in order to evaluate the transparency. Now, this particular template also has a shadow floor built in, which you can enable here, and this will give you real 3D shadows underneath the object. Now, this reflective floor and shadow floor will not be built into every template or every C4D file that you get, but we have tutorials on Cineversity.com explaining how to build these for any 3D object, assuming you have Cinema 4D. So now we can see a real 3D shadow layered on top of this Illustrator artwork. And again, we can jump into the lighting panel and get rid of this backlight, for instance, in order to eliminate the double shadow and get just the shadow from the front light primarily. Now when you're ready to create your final output, there's two main things that you need to do. The first is you need to increase the raster quality of your texture. And to do that, you're going to jump into the scene structure panel and find the label that you added. Down here in the attributes, you'll see that there's a raster DPI, which by default is 72. That means that this vector artwork has been turned into pixels at 72 pixels per inch. In order to get a higher quality render, you're going to want to increase this to 150 or 300 DPI, or you can set a custom value if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and set up 300 DPI. And the reason why I waited until the end to do this is that once you do this again, things are going to update more slowly. So we can work and build our scene up at 72 DPI, knowing that at the end we're going to increase our quality. The other thing that we need to do is increase our render quality, and we'll do that again from this drop down. Now you have two options at this point, which is high quality or custom. High quality is a built-in universal preset, and custom is going to use the custom render quality defined in the Cinema 4D file or template. In this case, we'll use custom because that render quality is optimized for this particular scene in order to give us the best balance of speed versus quality. Now again, this is going to take even longer to update than the low quality mode, but this is something that you're going to do towards the end of the process. And after just a minute here, you can see that we've got now a nice, very high quality render of our coffee mug. Now let's assume you need to create multiple variations of this mug for presentation purposes. Well, you can simply alt drag in order to create a copy of the C4D artwork. And each one of these copies is going to act independently. So I'm going to select this first copy and pause it just to make sure that nothing gets updated and it doesn't slow our process down. And we'll go to the new copy and I'm going to switch into draft mode. And I'm also going to switch back into the reflective environment, or actually we'll just hide the shadowed floor. And in this case, let's go ahead and make the mug black. And so to do that, again, we'll select the color chip here next to the mug object and click the color chip here and change the color to black. Now, up until now, we have simply matched the color of the mug to the color of the artwork. But now I want to show you how to actually eliminate the background of the artwork so that we can see the underlying mug color in all cases. So to do that, what we need to do is create a mask. So we'll create a copy of our existing artwork simply by alt dragging. And we need to recolor this copied artwork. Uh, there's multiple ways that we can do that. One of them is using Illustrator's edit recolor artwork option. So we'll choose edit, edit colors, recolor artwork. And we want to go ahead and take this down to two colors. We basically want to end up with black and white. Anything that's blue, we're aiming to end up with black for that. And any other color, we basically want to force to white. Now there's a couple of blue elements here that were a slightly different color that we want to make white as well. So we'll just click and drag those colors up here into this batch so that everything that's at any color other than the background turns white. Now we need to take care of these two strokes here as well. So we're going to 
click in here, create a new color, and set these to white as well. And the white stroke we don't need to worry about because it's already white. So we'll go ahead and hit OK, and now we'll take this mask and apply it to our artwork. So again, we need to go into the mug outside, click on this mug label, material swatch, and then if we scroll down here in the Attributes Manager, we have an alpha channel. So we'll drag our mask onto the texture slot for this alpha. Again, we'll just select the artwork, drag it over texture until it lights up, release the mouse, and that's going to apply this as an alpha mat. After it applies, in just a second, you'll see that now we get the background color of the mug shining through. So we can create an additional copy of this mug and we'll make this mug white. So we'll select the mug color chip and we'll select the color here and go ahead and change this to white. Hit OK. And after it updates in a second, we get a white mug. We can even create a glass mug. So I'm going to Alt drag again create another copy. And for this one, we're going to go to the mug texture, go down here to transparency and enable that. And now it's going to treat that base color of the mug like glass. Now again, all of these are just in preview mode right now. So I'm going to select each one of them individually, turn back on the reflective environment, and then we will go back through and turn up the high quality render for each one of these renders. After tweaking each of these variations a little bit using the techniques I've already shown you here and waiting for the full quality renders, I get a really nice combination of variations that I could present. And I hope this gets you excited about the possibilities of Cineware for Illustrator and I also hope that you will stay tuned because in the coming weeks we will be releasing additional tutorials showing how you can take these concepts into Cinema 4D, adding animation and creating really dynamic presentations and also how you can build these templates from scratch in Cinema 4D.